We're in Launceston for the second round of the NAB Cup. Hawthorne against Carlton. Two of 2007's aspirational class of teams. Both with genuine hope now of better times ahead after some grim years. Of course, it's Hawthorne's second home. And by winning last week, they have a fifth game here this year, as well as their four scheduled home and away matches. Good evening and welcome to Aurora Stadium and welcome to Michael Voss. Perfect conditions, your first time here and I can see you're pretty taken with it. Oh, what a magnificent sta uh, ground, I mean, uh, and stadium for that matter. It's, uh, it's perfect, I would think one of the better grounds in Australia. A bit hard to pick a winner tonight. Hawthorne with some familiarity with this ground, which has tricked some first-time visitors before, but Carlton with very much a full-strength team. Yeah, they have, and I'm really interested to see how Carlton uh, counter Hawthorne's run. There's one thing that they lacked a little bit last year was that run, and they've got a great test today with Hawthorne, and they certainly lead that way, but I think the big spaces might favour Hawthorne today. Well, there are the Hawks. Um, they got a mixed reception as they came out. Not all Tasmanians barrack for Hawthorne, let me tell you that. Um, they have picked just about the best team they can, but uh, they have some injuries with uh, Crowe and Smith and Dixon. Sidelined, uh, Campbell Brown rubbed out after last week. Yeah, they do, but they've still got some big guns there, as we see Mitchell on screen. I mean, he's really important to their on-ball structure, and if you had a partner in crime, there's Hodge straight away. I mean, they're both fantastic players, and a lot of their drive will come from there. And apart from Shane Crawford, it's a pretty young look about the Hawthorne lineup. The Blues, they have gone absolute full strength, full steam ahead, not put off by the fact that a NAB Cup win a couple of years ago didn't ultimately lead them somewhere. No, and they shouldn't be. I mean, they've had a little bit going on in the off-season, as we know, and the way to be able to generate um, some real enthusiasm amongst their members and fans is by coming out here and doing well and unveiling um, for the first time some of their um, real young players, and there's some fantastic players there. So the crowd are in, uh, the local press predicting uh, the best ever crowd for a pre-season comp match here. All that will be revealed in a little while. Let's have a look at the teams. Michael Christian and Robert Walls are going to do that for us. Good evening, Chris O. Evening, Tim, and good evening, everyone. A real buzz in Launceston this afternoon ahead of this round two of the NAB Cup and really looking forward to it, Rob. Plenty of support for the Hawks, but there's also plenty of Carlton fans in town. Absolutely. Uh, the merchandise stand down below the Carlton merchandise stand, inundated with you had Carlton. Well, I did. I bought a couple of things there, but uh, also the Hawks, they're pretty popular here because they've played plenty of games in recent years here at Aurora Stadium. Well, let's take a look at the teams for tonight's clash, and we start, Rob, with the Hawks. Looking at that Hawthorne team, so impressive last week. Zach Dawson, we've highlighted at fullback. Now, he's skinny, he's tall, he hasn't played the position a lot. I think he'll play on Brendan Favola tonight. What a great education that'll be for him. And Tim Boyle, we've mentioned as well there, he's, uh, he's in the red. Now, you look at that Hawthorne Hawthorne forward line with Franklin and Roughhead. Throw Boyle in there, you've got three tall players, all of them quite mobile, and that'll cause a few problems for the Carlton defence. And of course, Mark Williams there as well. And let's uh, now take a look at the Blues, of course, uh, good winners over the Bombers in the opening round of the NAB Cup. So impressed with that Carlton back line. I hope Jared Waite stays there all season at centre half back. Oh, Halpin was very impressive on the last line of defence. That releases Brett Thornton to do a little bit more. And Kennedy, he's a tall forward, takes a bit of pressure pressure off Whitnell and Favola. Bryce Gibbs highlighted there. His first game in the Carlton Colours last week. Didn't get a lot of it, but what he did was very classy. Two young sides on the up. Back to you, Tim. So it looks as though we might get that dream matchup between Jared Waite and Lance Franklin. I'm told that Waite will line up in the back half. Franklin, such an exciting uh, young prospect for Hawthorne. In fact, he's more than that now. He's a genuinely emerging one. Four final quarter goals last week. Let's relive some of that before we take a break and come back for the bounce. Welcome back to 
to Saturday footy tonight at Aurora Stadium in Launceston and they certainly love their football here and in particular they love their Hawks. Although tonight there are quite a few Carlton supporters as well and they actually booed Hawthorne onto the ground as they ran through the banner. So you can expect the crowd to have quite a bit of involvement in this game throughout the night. The conditions are pretty good on the warmish side. Currently 23 degrees. We're expecting it to get down to about 15 tonight. We did have some rain this afternoon. Hasn't had an effect on the surface just yet although they are predicting showers later on as well. Hopefully that won't be until after the game. Um, quite a strong breeze heading towards the southern end of the ground, so that means that'll be Carlton's way in the first term. So good conditions could favour Carlton in the first term, boys. Thank you, Christy. Good to have you on board, and I'm glad the conditions are nice down there for you. There are the Blues and uh, the Hawks huddling up before the start, all pushing each other in the back, I see. <laughs> that would be a multiple uh, free kick. Michael, you've uh, been having a look at the, the laws of the game. What do you make of what is happening in the early part of this competition? Well, it's certainly been a cause for frustration, Tim, and the umpires have said to us that it is a new interpretation. I contend that it's actually a new rule because law 1545B of the Australian AFL rule says a player makes when a player makes prohibited contact with an opposition player, only when he pushes the opposition player in the back unless such contact is incidental to the marking contest. Now, if you have him place your hands in the back, that is, in my opinion, a new rule, not necessarily a new interpretation. And it's certainly going to cause plenty of frustration as we go through the year, and we saw a couple of examples last week. Well, this has taken interpretation as written in the rules because the rules implies that there needs to be some interpretation by the umpires. This seeks to take that out of it. Bossy, what do you think? Well, it certainly does, and I really think that uh, the push in the back has got to be impeding the contest not just resting your hand on someone's back when you haven't actually, when you haven't done anything. Um, that's the major interpretation change. And as you said, I think it's more of a rule change yeah. than anything else. And uh, we're going to have the matchup that we wanted. Jared Waite playing on Buddy Franklin. There's Zach Dawson. He's gone to full back on Brendan Favola. This will be a terrific contest through the course of the night. And uh, look at the two there. And Michael Vossi, you said uh, Jared Waite needs to make sure he stops Franklin turning onto that left boot. He does. He's got to keep him on his defensive side. He can't get him offensive, otherwise he's just going to destroy him. Keep him up the ground, keep body pressure on him. That's harder said than done with his running ability. But he's not necessarily a great mark, so you've got to test that. Brett Thornton with the job on Mark Williams. And the second round match is underway. The winner to meet either the Kangaroos or Fremantle at the semi-final stage. And we haven't progressed far from that first bounce. Sam Mitchell coming up with a football. Number five for the Hawks. Carazzo is his shadow for the night. Help clear by Ackland, but straight to uh, Lewis. Off to Taylor and the Hawks away. Now Guerra on the non-preferred side. Just a little hesitant, but did it beautifully. And it's first blood to the Hawks. Boyle taking the mark. He's the one, Tim. He's the third tall with uh, Franklin and Roughhead. And there is the aforementioned Jared Roughhead. Just a lapse in concentration there. Just wasn't quite on the ball. When the space is here, that's the space you've got to guard. When someone's got the ball 60, 70 metres out from goal, you've got to stand in front of your opponent there and guard the space. Good cohesive build-up by Hawthorne. Guerra delayed and delivered perfectly. And Boyle was able to find Roughhead well within range. The angle favouring the left footer. But he's across the face. The first score of the evening in this twilight match is a behind. They have lights here, of course, in Launceston, <laughs> and they will be on in a little while. Scott that wasn't meant to be a joke. <laughs> and the Blues work it out under pressure. Now a chance for Russell. Handball. Scotland had to prop. Carazzo under the pump. Hullahan missed it. Now a chance for Williams. Handball. Into the centre, taken by Mitchell. He sweeps it wide. Chance here for the Hawks. Young, Crawford. Can he find a target? Loose player, boy. Vision. Well, Tim Boyle started well. He had one kick in 96 minutes last Sunday against the Demons and coming in already for kick number two. And we've played just a couple of minutes. He broke his leg a couple of years ago and he really hasn't been able to uh, show us how good he is. But I like the setup with uh, Franklin, Roughhead and Boyle. And then you throw in Mark Williams as the leading forward. It's going to take some tossing this year. So from 35 metres, almost directly in front, Tim Boyle kicks the first goal of the match. He's there we see Josh Kennedy, the tall Carlton forward. Gillum, his opponent. 
And I like the fact that he will play in that forward line for the Blues. He'll do a lot of the heavy work, contest a lot of ball coming from the wings to half forward. Just takes a little bit of pressure off Whitnell and Favola. Important to point out it's Carlton's Josh Kennedy. Hawthorne's named in the 28. The youngster, son of and grandson of, uh, hasn't been chosen in the 24. Here's Birchall, young Tasmanian, and Roughhead's got it again. But this time an even tougher angle and a tough distance. He's a long way from home. The Blues haven't had a kick yet, and they haven't really looked like getting one. Dennis Pagan would be really worried. That wasn't 20 metres, so it's play on. Can Franklin do the impossible? Of course he can. Started so well again. What he did there was double back on the lead. He ran back to the goal square and then led back into the space, which was good work. Hawthorne dominating out of the centre in the early stages. Ranked third in centre clearances in 2006. Mitchell again, was he taken high? Yes, free kick to Sam Mitchell. Guerra again involved, drives it wide. Williams out on the lead, couldn't quite trap the awkward half volley. And Thornton mops up, jams it on the boot. First kick for the Blues. Back towards the wing, Betts couldn't control it. Well, jumping into it there with aggression with Simpson. Betts, and now the Blues away. Nick Stevens a chance. Favola goes. Favola on the lead. Was he pushed? No free kick. At ground level, a chance. Beautifully done by Murphy. To goal to Carazzo. And Carazzo kicks the first for the Blues. And Fine. despite the fact they were under pressure in their back half, they managed to work it through very, very well. If we see as this comes through here, we're going to see the, the uh, play. Sorry, we missed that. Mark Murphy, front and square. A little bit later on in front of Fev. We're going to see it right here. Fev does a contest right in front, exactly where you want your rover to be. And good run and great finish. High percentage play from the Blues. The first time they actually got the football, they took it forward and gold. This, I think, is a uh, mismatch, and that's Thornton playing on Williams. I think Andrew Walker is the player to go on to Williams, and Thornton then can go out onto Boyle. Taylor, Tasmanian, rucking for Hawthorne, but the Blues win the footy. Lappin to Stevens. Carlton settling into their stride. Fisher. Blues on the build again. Whitnell's up front. That's where Fisher heads. Probably not Whitnell's preferred situation, right. but Ackland takes a ripper. The good... The good thing about the Ackland mark is that he ran with the flight of the ball and kept his eyes on the ball. It is a, you can see him running in there with the flight. That is a courageous mark, and that is something that all Carlton fans will be delighted with, particularly Dennis Pagan, the coach. Ackland coming across from St Kilda this year. That is the best thing he's done in a navy blue jumper. Taken Barnaby French's spot and his number, and he pops it through, and the Blues are up and away. Early spell for Eddie Betts, but the Blues have hit back hard here. And they've kicked the last two goals, just a point in it now. Ackland with his first of the evening. Back to do the ruck work against Simon Taylor. Ineffective ruck play. Mitchell, brilliant. Hamble's OK to Clark. Chips it towards half forward. Roughhead again. Good score from O'Halpin. Beautifully controlled, though, by Roughhead. Back to Mitchell. Turns inside. Oh, gee, scrubber of a kick. Sewell, third in the best in Ferris last year. Back to the best and fairest winner, Mitchell. Delivers towards half forward. Lewis trucks one tackle. Well done to Clark. He was dispossessed, though. And a chance again for Lewis. Pressure immense. He gathers at half forward. Or is he holding the ball? I think he'll be penalised. No. Umpire giving him the benefit of the doubt. A bounce at centre half forward for the Hawks. He looked as though he'd been hurt for a moment, but uh, I think he was appealing for sympathy from the umpire. <laughs> and he might have got it, as it turned out, with the ball up. Is that a push in the back? Yes, it is. A Carlton free kick. Houlihan over the ball, ridden forward. Made a good start last week. The often uh, maligned but sublimely talented Ryan Houlihan. Now Simpson up and comer for the Blues. And they're away. Murphy figured in the first goal. Always constructive. And he oh. is there. Whitnell should have hung on. Uh, Whitnell gave the don't argue into the face of his opponent. I think it's Gillum. And we might get a replay of that at some stage. You can just see he's got the, the hand right in the face of his opponent. Spot on decision by the umpire. Big ask there for Steve Gillum, given the job on the Carlton skipper. And it was probably that from Murphy's choice, he rarely makes the wrong choice, as we know, but he probably made the wrong choice there. He put it in uh, a little bit too far out from goal when he could have gone to Favola down the line, who made a good lead. 
So Cameron Cloak doing the ruck work against Taylor. Taylor gets it to Mitchell. He's immediately tackled by Bentick. Also Murphy involved there. About 60 from the Carlton goal. And sometimes when you kick that ball out from 40 metres out, it's a recipe for a rebound. And then the opposition can take it right down the ground really quickly and score on you. So you've got to be careful where you position that ball. Shepherding free kick against Simon Taylor. So the kick to be taken by former Magpie Cameron Cloak from 65. Drives it long to the top of the square. Dawson at the back got a fist in there. Bossy, right. it's uh, obvious Carlton are prepared to kick it long to a contest in their forward line. Kick it long and deep, and we saw the perfect crumbing of Mark Murphy earlier on that set up a goal. Well, it's a twofold thing. Of course, you've got to have the contest, and you've got to have the ground level support. If one's missing, and it goes AY. Russell had it for a moment for the Blues. Bentick working it out. Hard ball in there. Finally extracted by Taylor, but dangerously. For Vola from a long way. He's got a lot of power in that boot, but he's got a lot of hook on it as well, and it is out of bounds. And boy, the umpires come in a long way for the throw ins here because Vossi, we reckon the boundary lines were in by about 15 metres from the fence. It's like Waverley in the old days. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's huge. It's uh, You're not going to have any blokes sliding into the fence today, that's for sure. Whitnell to the front of the pack, but it's all Hawthorne. Lewis, Gillum, shares it with Clark. Oh, dubious looking handball, but Bateman showed great acceleration. Eventually got it to Virgil. Now Guerra, but great pressure from the Blues. Back towards Bateman. His handball was astray. And well done to the Blues there. Their forward pressure, excellent drop. Absolutely, Carlton doing well there to lock it in. And we see Guerra in picture. Interchanging a lot, the Hawks. Boundary throw in. Cloak gets it down. Little toe poke forward by Stevens. Only as far as Lewis. Good. Oh, no, it wasn't. Comes to Murphy from outside 50. He bombs, bangs away for right pointer. Super goal to Mark Murphy. Umpires confirming now. But the Blues, for the first time tonight, are in front. <laughs> you know, we talk of the skills of Mark Murphy, and he's, the ball's been turned over, and he's taken two steps, I think. One, two, bang, kicks it from 55. That's good. Like Ricky Ponting with those bats they use these days, banging it longer than you imagine is possible for a person of that stature. And Tim, talking about Ricky Ponting, he grew up just nearby here, didn't he, at Mowbray? Mowbray, which is just north of here, and in fact at the northern end of this ground is a small oval called Invermay Park where he played his great cricket for Mowbray. Sam Mitchell in picture, six disposals already in this first quarter. So the Blues have kicked the last three, three and a half in fact, with a super goal. They're looking good at the moment. Strong tackle on Gibbs, the number one draft pick and the member of Carlton's leadership group in his very first season. Another ball up. Scott Jeffrey, the umpire here. He's uh, Tasmania's umpire of the century. Has named a couple of years ago and uh, has been, of course, a regular on the AFL umpiring list for quite some time. He's a busy man at the moment because the ball's not coming out of there. I'd like Cameron Cloak to just change his angle a little bit. Um, you know, he's not going to be able to jump over the taller opponent. So you've just got to be able to mix it up a little bit in there and try something different. He's going to be a willing worker for them, uh, Vossi, because he, look, he's as fit as I've ever seen him, Cameron Cloak. And, and the last two games that the Blues have played, they've alternated with Ackland and Cloak. It's around about seven minutes each, and it's been a 50-50 share. Big cheers for Kuta, who's just come onto the ground. 34-year-old Anthony Kuta Fides running straight into the thick of the action. I assume there was some blood in there. It was like a basketball substitution otherwise, with the play stopped and both teams making wholesale changes. Gibbs has another go. It's his third try in there. Still hasn't been able to extract it. Bentick does. Can the Blues make something of it? Houlihan, Cloak, Scotland. Pressure from McGlynn was good, though, and the turnover comes to Young. That's a probing left footer, but it uh, caught his forwards a little flat-footed. And it spills the Blues way. Stevens. High tackle. Carlton's ball. And they're allowed, or are they? No, they're not. It will come back. Matthew Head are judging that uh, play hadn't been continuous, presumably. Stevens has weight calling and marking well. Got a terrific vertical jump, has Jared White. Oh, poor Hamble, though, to Thornton. Turns it over. Campbell 
chance for Williams, a long way from goal. Good handball, sits Crawford away. He runs towards the front of the centre square, kicks to a vacant goal square, Boyle. Tim Boyle's marked 10 metres from goal. One of, the, one of the things we know that cost Carlton last year was the turnovers. We saw one on the wing just here, which directly led to this shot at goal. But there was another one in the middle where Cameron Cloak missed his target to Heath Scotland. He just got to make those. Boyle for number two. He pops it through. So the margin in favour of Carlton now back to two points. Morsey, it just puts tremendous pressure on your defence when you see a, a, a turnover in the middle of the ground, a fundamental error like that. We know we all make mistakes, but, uh, you know, we just you can't afford that in the game situation. Well, it's a big mistake because the handball doesn't even get to uh, Thornton on the full. It lands at his feet, and uh, you do pay the ultimate. It rebounds, and a tall Hawthorne forward takes an easy mark, kicks an easy goal. Hawks have switched Ruckman. Carlton starting... Last year's captain on the interchange bench, Kudafidi is now into the fray. Lewis at his shoulder. Campbell against Cloak. And Cloak with a good leap, won well. But the Blues can't take it away. Campbell, Lewis, and uh, the Hawks are able to come away with the footy. Mitchell. Doing very out, well out of the middle of the Hawks at the moment. Crawford just not quite the carry to reach Williams. He waited down wisely. Wait there, just... Not quite playing with confidence here. Might have been a little unsettled by Franklin's start. And again, we're seeing this brand of football. It's only early days, but Hawthorne, 18 kicks and 30 handballs. So handballing a lot more than they kick. Campbell gets it down. Little fumble there from Scotland. Franklin couldn't control it. McGlynn, good handball. Well done. Off to Moss. High inside attacking 50. Good fist there from Walker. Spills to Young, non-dominant side. Vacant goal square bouncing. Offline. So behind to the Hawks. Margin back to one point. Wonder if the high handball count, Rob, is contributed to in some way by the 20 metres required for a mark to be taken. So yep. the hand pass becomes a safe, safer possession option. May well be, Tim. I think the other thing, Tim, is that if you've got a 20 metre minimum, you've really got to kick at 23, 24 mm. metres to make sure it's pay to mark. Yep. And uh, I don't know, it, may, it does make you wonder. You can see the, the logic in having the 20 metre kick for a mark to be taken. But uh, on the other hand, we don't want more handball. We do want the feet to be used a lot. Crawford sweeping it forward. Gives McGlynn a chance. Couple of goals last week. Can't get out of there. And is pinned. Carlton's ball. Break away on. They're allowed to go. Betts, not a lot to go to. Carlton might yet be a chance. Carazzo having to contend with about three and didn't do a bad job to produce a ball up. The Craw Crawford sweeping handball. Now, that was every bit of 20 metres. Players today can handball a long, long way 20 years ago. There's there's another 25 metre sweeping handball. Well, Walsey, when we're talking about handball receives, right now in the game, it's 27 to 6 in favour of Hawthorne. Mm. I mean, they're running really hard and sharing the ball. They are indeed. Now with Sewell uh, from half forward, direct kick to the goal square. Franklin in the contest, but very well played by Waite. Is there a free kick? Hands in the back. Let's Whoa. have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> now, the umpire was right on it. He was 10 metres to the side, had a perfect look at it. The, cra the fans hate it. There's the push. It's there. And Jared Waite, lots of controversy during the week because he said he had used his fist. He was told by the umpires that it was OK. Um, uh, the coach, Jeff Gershon, said it wasn't. Goal to Hawthorne. Well, there's Jared Wake with a push in the back, but I think the replay will show here that there's the double action. Even last year, I would have thought that you could argue that that was a free kick. Umpire Voss has his finger up. That's out. <laughs> Umpire Wen was quite correct. Leeds changed a couple of times in this opening quarter. This promised to be a really good game, and it's living up to it in the first term. Well done, Walker. Judged that high ball well. Has Stevens loose out on the flank. And the Blues will break. Need to be clean. White delivers. Delivers well to Simpson. Nice ball into half forward. Murphy. Oh, he's been good. Now, does he hand pass? No, he kicks and he does it well. Favola was touched up. Well, not, maybe not 20. Neither was that. But it doesn't matter. Betts finishes.
finishes the job. Seals the deal and puts the Blues back in front. Mark Murphy is a star. He was courageous when he took the mark. He was smart to run and bounce and carry. He was unselfish to get the short chip pass. Here's the mark. Didn't know what was coming. He draws for Vola's opponent. Umpire says that's not a 20 metre kick. No, Calls Dawson, play on. Dawson might have just got a hand in there, Rob, just to. And finished off with the goal there by Betts. If you could have it in Murphy's hand 100 times a game, you'd give it to him, wouldn't you? He just is so creative with it. Good play from Eddie Betts, too. Second last year in Carlton's goal kicking with just 20 goals. Just he and prevent Brendan Favola scoring 20 or more. Campbell now follows up his ruck work, holds Stevens, no free kick. Guerra, good tackle coming from Betts, spending time in the midfield. Play on the call. Campbell, Bateman, electrifying pace, kicks to the top of the goal square. Rough heads a good chance here. Couldn't quite get there as he pushed out. No. Oh, helping. Handball shark by Roughhead. The handball's back towards the square, but it's all Carlton, and they do enough to run it over for a boundary throw in. And Hawthorne are getting really penetrating clearances out of the middle at the moment. It's six to one, but it's the use of the ball when they're coming out that makes it dangerous. Chance Bateman in picture there. He was in Perth yesterday for his brother's wedding. Cloak beautifully to Lappin, and now Scotland. And that's a good kick with the left foot. And it finds Carlton's Kennedy, Josh Kennedy. He's the one I've got my eye on, Tim. I've got high hopes for this young fella. Josh J. Kennedy, as opposed to Hawthorne's Josh P. Kennedy. Here go the Blues. Cloak, who's done well. Dawson, though, the big spoil. And uh, this is Travis Tuck, another uh, father-son recruit for Hawthorne. Crawford looked for a target that wasn't there. So oh. Crawford goes back and gets it again. Guerra had a bit of it in the first turn, but had to kick off a step and blind. And gave it straight to Wade, who's settling in, although Franklin's kicked a couple on him in this opening term. Scotland, oh, Crawford, terrific pressure. Produces the turnover. McGlynn from a long way. Just pulled off the kick. Pressure on Thornton here. Williams a bit smaller. A bit more nimble-footed. Clever kick. Boyle can line them up. Gee, wonderful play by Williams. He's going to play it on. In fact, loose men are everywhere, and Clark can line them up, and he might get 50. And, and set up by Shane Crawford. Didn't go at the player at centre-half forward. Corralled him yep. and made him go through him, and a great piece of play from the former captain. Well, it's Crawford who set the goal up just with some really good tackling. Just forced Heath Scotland into error. And the Hawks have done this a couple of times. Forced Carlton to turn the ball over and then capitalised. No penalty, it still has to be kicked. Clark manages to miss it. Scores a level, which is about where they deserve to be after a thrilling opening term. Who's got the points in the first quarter, Vossi, with Waite and uh, Buddy Franklin? Well, Buddy's touched it really once and kick the goal but that's what he's like very dangerous you know it doesn't need to touch it a whole lot for him to be able to have an impact walker high now what's going to happen here i think it's a relay free kick down the ground to carlton and it'll come to lance whitnell Campbell inside russell Gee, Kud kuda's free up forward simpson now runs through the center of the ground looks for kuda feet inside he caught it beautifully Rob. well he's been free there for the last 30 seconds and it was just a matter of whether Carlton could get a clean break from the centre, and that's poor defensive work by the Hawks. That's a beautiful kick. Oh, isn't it? A bullet-like kick from Cade Simpson. Now, Vossi, this is the ideal pre-season. Just spend it dancing. Perhaps you could have played <laughs> another year. Could have feed his kicks. Misses. Blues with their noses in front. Me and Stilowitz are not a good look, Wolsey. <laughs> Imagine Cooter four or five years ago would have kicked that 99 times out of 100. He was uh, in his heyday a beautiful kick for goal. Guerra, always a good kick, finds Mitchell. Carlton in front by a point. Mitchell been very good in the centre crushes. Lewis, it wasn't 20, so the pressure comes. Sewell, Hawthorne there in healthy numbers. Mitchell has two options on the other side. The Hodge option is a good one. 
Favola comes at him hard, got him under some pressure, but then pushed him after the kick. And there'll be a relay free. Clark. Hodge kept coming, just couldn't run on. He was going onto his non-preferred side. There's the Hawthorne forward line. Williams, as you saw, was away, and he's got it. It's and what I like point. about it, Tim, that Hawthorne forward line, it's so disciplined. They did it last week against Melbourne. They have four forwards always in the forward 50. When the ball's at the other end of the ground, in the Hawthorne back line, they don't get sucked in to coming down to the middle of the ground as a lot of clubs do, as a lot of players do. And it just means that when they get that break from the wings, they've got four targets to go at. He's led the Hawks goal kicking for the last two years with 60 or more. He misses here and he ties up the scores again. And Sam Mitchell is already at 10 possessions. Seven handball receives. He certainly can find the ball. To a poor kick from Jared Waite, straight to Jordan Lewis. Lewis now, a chance to find Boyle. He hands couldn't quite hold on. Well done at ground level by McGlynn. Scrambles it forward. Only as far as Simpson. Thornton, that's not 20. Oh, he's kicked straight into the charging Mitchell. And a boundary throw in half forward for the Hawks. Michael, when you played, did you know how many uh, possessions you'd had? Uh, not, no, I didn't, but I certainly knew how much my opponent had. And you've got to be able to reassess the situation when your opponent starts to get four or five quick possessions You've got to change your approach. You've got to go a little bit more negative through the midfield You can't just keep playing your attacking game when your opponent's just racking up possessions I suggest you knew up until about 35 Rob <laughs> Lappin That's possessions not years of age <laughs> Pull the hand back to Lappin Well in a bit of trouble here could have feet. He's picked it up superbly at ground level and then kicks it dangerously to Walker who has to stand and wait he does it very well Gee, did he get a pressure did, from Roughhead did he get a forearm on the jaw now no 50 meter penalty so I reckon he got one on the honker he did so Walker poor kick well done by Murphy he knocks it over and we'll get a boundary throw in on center wing just not quite using the ball well enough at the moment, Carlton. And it's hurting him a little bit. I mean, you know, they've done well to keep the score level because I, I, I reckon Hawthorne have been the better team so far. Ackland back in ruck for the Blues with Taylor. And uh, it was well done by Ackland. But uh, in the way, Guerra had a good quarter. Releasing McGlynn, who's been good, but he had a, got a shocking bounce. Betts kicked blindly. Straight to Sewell. As Michael said, third in the best and fairest last year was... Uh, an outstanding result. Well, that's quarter time, and it has certainly lived up to the billing. It's 28 apiece. Carlton and Hawthorne vying for a semi-final spot in the NAB Cup. A cup can be both satisfied with a pretty good start. Yeah, and as we've seen already, Hawthorne are prepared to share the ball around. Um, we saw them last week. They flipped the ball around a lot, and they're doing it again and sharing the ball. We'd like Carlton perhaps hit their targets a little bit more. It's probably costing them on the scoreboard. If they can fix that, we can look forward to a much better second quarter. 4-4 apiece at the first change in this second round fixture, the very early stages of a new season. So many questions to be answered between now and the last Saturday in September. One thing we do know, the grand final will again be on 10. The sixth straight season.